Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we're going to talk about two indie films that you can watch for free on YouTube, which is really cool. Uh, so last year, I actually did a review for my friend Tajaya's film, which was called What Have I Done? And now we have the sequel to it, which is I've Done It Again. And that is available on his channel. And I want to give a big shout out to Tajaya for sending me an early copy. And I'm sorry with all the stuff I've been going through personal wise. Uh, I'm just now getting to this review and I, I apologize for it being so late. So with Tajaya's film, I've Done It Again, he's continuing his story about a cop who is a werewolf and he's falling in love. He, you know, gets this woman pregnant and that means there's going to be a child werewolf, you know, that will come into the world at some point. And he's struggling with, you know, the decisions he's made in his life, but he's also committed. He's like, you know what, I do love this person, but my, you know, professional life is getting very out of control. There's scenes in this one because I reviewed obviously his first film and one of my criticisms was I wish there was more scenes of him as a cop, you know, at a crime scene, looking at evidence and stuff like that. Well, Tajaya did more of that in this film, so I was like, hey, that's awesome. I don't know if that's the reason he did it, but there's more of it in this film, so I would say I probably like this one a little bit more than What Have I Done. Uh, not that I didn't like that movie, but it was just, you know, I had criticisms, you know, and I support indie filmmaking in general, so anyone who goes out there and makes something, you know, takes their time, gets friends involved and, you know, and talent and wrangles everything together and makes something and puts it on the internet, whether it's for free or if they sell it, it's a huge feat to accomplish. So I'm always gonna have mad respect, even if I have some criticisms. And anything I criticize, obviously just my opinion, right? And so my opinion on horror is different than other people's opinions. And that's what makes the world turn, is that we all could share our opinions and sometimes getting our, you know arguments over it, but sometimes having calm conversations about it. So, you know, I don't mean anything personal when I criticize something. It's just based on my perspective and my point of view. And Tajaya always gives his point of view in his videos, and that's what I really like about his stuff, is that we may not always agree, but when we do agree, it's awesome. When we don't agree, though, it's very professional um, and friendly, you know, towards each other because we have mad respect for each other. And when I saw this movie and I saw his previous film, it just feels like a combination of everything on his you know, YouTube channel. If you go there, there's poetry, you know, spoken word stuff. Um, there's stuff, you know, that's more adult theme where they talk. He talks about, you know, sex and, you know, interest in women and things like that. And then he also talks about, you know, cool sci fi stuff and horror stuff. He reviews movies. He talks about music. You know, it's just a really cool melting pot of a lot of stuff that he loves. And a lot of that ends up in his films. And that's kind of what I noticed the more and more I watch his stuff, which is this is a celebration of his YouTube channel. It's all the stuff that he does individually, put them together into a single narrative, into a 40 to 50 minute movie. And in this case, we got like a 45 minute film that you can check out, like I said, you can watch for free, about a werewolf who is, again, going through a midlife crisis almost in a way. In this film, we get a little bit more lore with the werewolves, which is something I criticized the first movie about. I was like, oh, I'd love to know more about what type of werewolves these are. You know, we learn about black haired werewolves, silver haired werewolves, blue and red and stuff like that. All that's mentioned in this. One thing I also liked is in the first film, I wanted more dialogue scenes where it was two people talking to each other. And we get more of that in this one. And again, I'm not saying Tajaya is like, you know, directly listening to my feedback, but I'm just saying I like that he put it in this film and that he included it because it works. Some of these scenes where it's him talking to his mom or him talking to his dad, you know, towards the end, um, and then, or him talking to his girlfriend, like all of these are great scenes in the film and they work better than I, in my opinion, with horror, better than like narrative, you know, stuff where it's like someone talking and you getting like images and stuff. Sometimes that works in certain scenarios. Uh, but for me, like when it comes to something that's lore based, like werewolves or vampires and stuff, I don't really uh, like that approach personally. Uh, so it was cool to see that there was more dialogue and more stuff giving through exposition in that way. Um, I appreciated that more in this film. And you know, for me, there's some cool shots in this. Tajaya has a great eye for filmmaking. And that's one of the things I praised his last movie about and that he continues so in this one and has evolved. There's some really neat shots. So, uh, you know, so for visually, I thought this one was a step up in certain regards, you know, just certain shots that he does because he does some like fun artsy shots and he does some fun static shots that are just great close up shots. He's really good at close ups. So there are these things in it that I'm like, wow, I can appreciate this as a, you know, someone without a visual memory, someone who like likes visual stuff um, and sees how other people bring things to life visually. I thought in this one he did a, you know, a stronger job than not that the last one wasn't that strong, but that was one of the things I praised the last one for. And this one did it a little bit better in certain aspects. So, you know, I got to give him a shout out there. And then also the writing, though, again, there's lore, there's character stuff, all that's in here. But some of the delivery on it is just not my personal cup of tea. Again, 
it's nothing personal. It's just like, I'm like, ah, you know, this is a neat conversation, but it goes on two minutes too long. In my opinion, I would cut out some of the ums and ahs and yeah, this, or, you know, I know actors get like that. Sometimes they get in their own heads where they say things and then, they, you know, they, um, they have like, you know, ums and ahs and stuff that you just, you're trying to remember your line, that kind of stuff. Like I would trim some of the dialogue in this just to kind of tighten it up again. I'm an editor by heart. So like for me, everything's too long, right? <laughs> Zack Snyder movies are way too long for me. I, I, in my head, I'm like chop, 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 chop. Um, and not to the point where you want to butcher a film by any means, but you want to get to the, you know, do you just want everything on the screen to be, you know, for a reason, you know, you don't want anything to be superfluous. And, uh, and so for me, I feel like some of, you know, Tajaya stuff can be superfluous in a way. You know, it's just like a little bit fillery, to kind of expand the the time of the film and to me i would rather a stronger shorter film than a you know like a good longer film uh that's just how my brain works though like i like to i do the same thing with my stories when i write i write a whole bunch of stuff and then i and i go what's the heart of this scene what's the most important lines that need to be said in this scene where it doesn't come across robotic and informational, it still feels organic, but I still need to just trim, 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 trim. Um, and then again, you know, eventually get to the point where you go, okay, this scene is, this is it. This has all the information I need in it. It doesn't sound robotic. It doesn't sound, you know, it sounds organic. It has everything I need and it sets something up that's going to happen later. Boom, let's get out of the scene now. Everything else is cut, trimmed, and let's go on to the next thing. And so that's kind of how I feel with writing and storytelling in general. And, uh, and that's where I, one area I would say, in my personal opinion, Tajaya is still, you know, honing his skills in. And uh, so for me, that may be a criticism on my part, but I still see it getting stronger in each film Tajaya makes. And the fact that he puts a film out almost every year now is amazing. Like, that's, that's unbelievably hard to do for anyone, let alone someone who is just doing it with, you know, with little resources and, you know, little financing it's very impressive. So for me, you know, I've done it again, I think is a step up in certain areas from what I've done. Um, but I also feel like there's still some things that, you know, Tajaya will grow with as he continues to be a filmmaker and storyteller. I think he'll get stronger on. And so this is just fun to watch someone's literal journey, you know, from film to film every year and just see the strengths get stronger and see some of the things that even I criticize that I don't wouldn't say are weaknesses, but just are things that need to be worked on, uh, seeing worked on, you know, and it's like, okay, it's in my personal opinion, it might not be there yet, but I saw other people's reviews saying, hey, this was better than the last time, or this is what I loved last time, and you did more of it this time, and it's fantastic. So again, different opinions, of course, but for me, I would say, whereas the last film, I gave more of like a two and a half out of five kind of area, I was like more in the middle, I would go a step up on this one. I would say I'm more like a three and a half, actually, out of five on this one. Um, this one had a little bit stronger points on it and a little bit stronger dialogue, and some of the visuals were stronger. I think this was a step up, and I think that all the stuff that Tajai is, you know, honing his skills in, in each area, they're getting stronger. And I'm telling you, this guy is a massive talent, and I can't wait to see what movie he comes out with next year and the year after, because I know they're just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And if you already like his stuff now, they're just going to get better. I can tell. And if you're critical of his stuff now, they're going to get, it's still going to get better. There's only going up from here. I can see it. He's a smart guy. He's learning from certain things, certain angles. He's trying out different camera techniques and it's coming together really nice. And I like the music in this one actually too. I, I kind of praised the last film for that a little bit, but I want to praise this one a little bit more because this had some beats in it that I'm like, okay, these are these are nice. There's some of them are calming, some of them are kind of jazzy a little bit or bluesish, um, but they all fit, you know, to help create the tone of this really cool black and white, you know, werewolf movie. So I would say, please go watch it. I'll put a link down below. Check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think of the film, but definitely let your comments be known on Tajaya's channel. Go comment over there and let him know what you think of his film, what you think he's doing really great at, what you're critical of, whatever it is. He's a very nice guy. He's very open to criticism and feedback. And, uh, you know, and just as long as you're cool about it and telling him what you liked, what you, you know, what you're critical on, he's very receptive. And, uh, and I think he's, that's what makes him an awesome artist. And what makes him so smart is that he will listen to people and go, okay, you know what? I'll consider it. Even if he doesn't do it, he considers it. And that's really cool of him. And the fact that I was critical of his last film and he still sent me this film to review shows a lot about his character and his professionalism. So Tajaya, 
Thanks for including me again. I'm sorry I'm late with this review, uh, but I just really wanted to dive into it. I watched this four times. <laughs> I really, I really was like, I want to sink my teeth in, no pun intended, again, but I want, really wanted to sink my teeth into this one and just dissect it and understand like more of your style. You know, again, my style is a tighter film, you know, uh, that doesn't, uh, you know, have things that I feel are prolonged unnecessarily, but you have a different eye and you have this poetic approach to things and poetry sometimes needs to breathe. It needs to take its time. And, uh, and that's what I appreciate about our two different styles and the fact that you still you know, wanted to hear my thoughts on this. And uh, despite me being on a different wavelength at times and you, you still ask me to talk about it. So hopefully I gave you something to you know think about with this. But overall, man, you just keep killing it. And don't really listen to what anyone says. You know, keep following your own star because it is leading you to massive success and more creativity and stronger storytelling, stronger acting abilities. Like everything is improving in so many ways. And I feel like you're learning from each experience and bringing what you've learned to the next experience. And that already right there, man, makes you just one of the best, you know, indie filmmakers out there. So please Keep grinding, keep shining, man, and keep sending me your stuff. I'll keep watching it. If you want to hear my dumb thoughts on it, I'm happy to give them to you. And I want to wrap this episode up because last year I did a dual feature with Tajaya's film along with Werewolf by Night. This year they released a color version. I was going to talk about that, but I thought, you know what? No, let's talk about another indie film. Let's do two indie films this year. And I came across this YouTube channel uh, through their Instagram. That's a bad idea. And I really like their stuff. They put out really funny shorts on Instagram. I like everything they put out. Uh, Curry Barker is one of the guys who, you know, kind of is the, one of the half the brainstorm uh, partnership of this group. And he put out a short film about a week before Tajaya's film came out uh, called uh, Warnings. And Warnings is this really creepy short film about someone who had a near-death experience and, you, and then after that is getting these weird letters and notes left on their car door and then inside their car and then at their house, you know, on their bed, on their TV. And then trippy things start happening from each experience. After the a new letter shows up, something else starts to, you know, deviate to where you realize the reality of the situation is skewed. They're not maybe even in our reality. There's something else going on entirely. And I don't want to spoil it. And there's not much to say because it's short. You know, this is one of those horror films that I'm like, yes, they probably have a 40, 45 minute cut of warnings. I, I imagine on some level there must, there's got to be a longer cut of it. But I, what they did was they chopped it down and they got to the meat of each scene and put it out there as like a, you know, good 20 minute uh, short film. And that is good. You want to put your strongest out there uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. And, and for me, this is more my kind of cut. And that's why I thought it'd be good to kind of talk about it along with Tajaya's, not to compare it so much, but just to kind of say like, hey, this is something I don't normally, uh, you know, follow like, like too much pacing wise, but I respect it. And this is something that I do like, but I have some criticisms of, you know, so like that's that's kind of why I want to do these two together. So with warnings, you know, the uh, you know, the way it's shot is it's good. I mean, there's some good shots in it, but I'm kind of critical of some of the shots as well. There's so, this really creepy shot of like this woman in a mask like kind of walking in slow motion like as someone's talking in real time and i'm like okay that's a good use of voiceover and a visual just kind of like not syncing up so there's something off-putting about it like unsettling about it so i really like that because the audio is like normal speed but she's moving in slow speed i'm like oh my god okay that's creepy <laughs> that's definitely creepy and then there's like the those standard shots so that i don't really like where it's like, oh, let's put something in here crazy just to be crazy, you know, and, and that comes with being a young filmmaker. I, I feel like Tajaya doesn't do stuff like that because his is more cerebral in a way where he's like, uh, you know, I'm older. I know that stuff just kind of comes across or can come across kind of cheesy. And for me, that's the only criticism majorly that I have of this film, Warnings, which is like the scene where Curry is like screaming and he's like, stop, no. And it's like slow motion and the blood's coming out of his mouth. It's like something like that. I feel like went on a little too long. You should just do like one or two quick shots of that where he's like, you know, screaming and there's nothing coming out of his mouth. And then all of a sudden stuff comes out of his mouth or, you know, quick cut to something else, what he's looking at and then back to him and it's coming out. Like you do it real quick, you know, uh, to make it effective. Uh, I really like uh, Mike Flanagan and how he makes horror films like, uh, or his shows, you know, Hill House and Bly Manor and the new one with Fall of Usher, like uh, Fall of House of Usher. That one's like really cool because there's a lot of stuff happening in the background that you're not seeing. And I like more stuff like that, where it's not 
so in your face. Um, sometimes in your face can work for sure, like a slasher flick or something like that. But this warnings is cerebral. It has a really cool twist on it. Uh, again, I don't want to spoil. So I'm not going to say that there's nothing in this is cerebral. It is. It's fully cerebral. But there's some stuff in it that's just a little too in your face. And I'm like, well, if you're going for cerebral, maybe this shouldn't linger as long as it does. Again, just my personal opinion um, on that one scene with the stuff coming out of his mouth. Um, and then some of the dialogue scenes, they go a little too long. They feel natural, though, uh, which is good. Sometimes that's hard to get is a, a more natural conversation. You know, Tajaya does that really well in his story where conversations are kind of natural. And that's good. Like I said, that's hard to kind of put into a story and, and get from your actors and stuff. And so there's natural dialogue in this. But sometimes I'm like, eh, I would have probably cut this line or cut that line uh, where people are asking him for the fourth time. Was it this person who sent the letter? Was it this person who wrote the letter? You know, it's like some of that you're like, ah, you don't need all of these in there. Um, but again, nitpicky stuff, really. And, and really on both of these films, nitpicky stuff, the criticism I have, because at the end of the day, talented people on both ends making really cool stuff and sharing it and putting it on the internet for free which is really cool of them so i want to give a, you know that's a bad idea i want to give them some love i want to give to jaya black plastic media i want to give him some love i'm going to put links to both their channels and their short films that i'm talking about here down below i've done it again and warnings both really cool to watch and like i said i don't want to talk more about warnings because there's a twist in it like there's some interesting twist in it and also a twist in Tajaya's film too so yeah please go watch I've done it again and please go watch warnings both of these are really awesome subscribe to those channels support indie filmmakers especially people who put it online for free that's super cool so thank you guys for making these you know works of art thanks for sharing it with us and being open to criticism and I appreciate Tajaya sending me a copy of his movie early and again, I apologize for being late reviewing it, but I think this was a better pair than putting you with Werewolf by Night again, because uh, I don't have anything new to say about Werewolf by Night. It's just in color, and the color looks pretty cool. That's my review of it. I still love the movie, but I like it more in black and white. And I like that Tajaya shoots in black and white. And I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, that uh, that's a bad idea. Maybe them, Curry and them, do something in black and white at some point. Um, I think uh, their visual style is really unique. And I think they could lend, uh, you know, they could make something pretty cool looking in black and white as well. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a black and white fan, so I want more films in black and white. So thank you guys so much for watching the show as always. Ace is uh, ready for bed, I think, back there. I've uh, been sleeping almost this whole time. So I'm going to go as well and join him. So thank you so much for being here and watching the show. I appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts down below if you've watched any of these films. If you're subscribed to these channels, if you have any ideas or feedback, let me know. But please, I'd prefer you to go to their channels and leave your feedback there and uh, and let them know how you feel about the work of art that they shared with us. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.